We believe that role-playing games should take place in fantastic worlds. The focus of the game should be on role-playing and having a good time. The core values of Hashtag RPGate and any good tabletop group are escapism, not representation, entertainment over activism, and natural, organic inclusion, not forced diversity. The charity we support is the Wounded Warrior Project, a national, nonpartisan organization whose mission is to honor and empower wounded warriors. Please refer to the description below for the link to where you can make your hopefully tax-deductible donation. Join us Thursday and Saturday evenings on twitch.tv slash Legion of Myth to watch Heathen Dog and his team of dirty casuals play multiplayer games for your mockery and enjoyment. Here on our YouTube channel, you can watch these game-related segments live every Sunday at 1 p.m. Central Time, or check out the Friday Night Show stream where our panel of guests opine, comment, and editorialize on the TTRPG hobby as a whole. Please like this video and leave a comment to appease the algorithm gods. Share this video on your favorite social media platforms to help us peer out of the shadows cast over us. And if you have not done so already, please subscribe to Legion Myth for more tabletop RPG goodness. And we want to thank all of you wonderful people who support us monetarily. Your gracious donations help us provide giveaways, maybe even some today, produce more content, and generally give back to Legion Myth community as a whole. We ha we're encroaching 4,500 YouTube subscribers, and we're thankful for each and every one of you. And check the description below for the links to the various Legion Myth sites social media, Discord, merch, etc. All right. Whew, finally got all that out of the way. Thank God they're in video format. So hello, Legionnaires, and welcome to episode 149 of RPG Digest. I am John Maxley Auschlow. Along with me, as usual, is Brett Heathen Dog Grismer. And along with him is the rest of the state of Michigan, apparently, as we once again welcome back to RPG Digest, our friends and fellow gamer nerds, who somehow found time between shipping packages and preparing for Gen Con, Kevin Simbita and Sean Owen Robertson from Palladium Books. How is everybody doing today? Good. You got it right. Right in between. We're, uh, we're carving out some time for you guys. <laughs> well, I, I was really surprised when you kicked back the email and said, hey, let's do it Sunday. I was like, really? <laughs> okay. We, just, we didn't want you to wait to open yep. packages. We, we, but also, it's one of those things we're going to be tired later, so I might as well do it now. He's had that for almost two weeks now, and it, it's been it's been its own little precious. It has. Look at it. I I can see while he's on stream, he'll. It's, it was sitting on my unboxing desk that I have over yep. there that I never use anymore, and I'm I want to open it. Right. Uh, uh, but you know, to appease me in the meantime, I did get two other packages I got to uh, open. One we won't talk about because it's for some home stuff, and the other one was Dragon Bane. But now. I finally get to get to open up this bad boy. Uh, just just up front, though, I don't know if I, I don't think I said it for the stream. It did come kicked. Somebody threw it. Yep. So we'll Ooh. find out. <laughs> My so, wife took pictures of it. She's like, I didn't do it. <laughs> it's a USPS special delivery. I know, right? Oh, <laughs> it's 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 Alabama, man. They're they're shaking it to see what was in there. <laughs> So, but no, I uh, really appreciate having you guys here, especially at this time. Hopefully we don't waste too much of your time, but definitely want to have a good conversation because every time you guys are on, it is fun. And I can tell you uh, the last time we were on, we had uh, people with thoughts, thoughts for us saying, it's good that you took it to them. Ah! And then thoughts like, I hope they never show up on your show again. You were so rude to them. So it's it's great that, you know, we had both sides of that. And uh, the, the fact is, like I keep telling everybody, they're adults, we're adults, we're gamer nerds, we have fun, we we all have passion for it. Obviously, they have passion for it because they run it. We have passion for it because we talk about it. This is how people are. So, so I want to thank you guys very much. So just before we get into, you know, heavy topics, uh, what have you guys been up to? I mean, obviously, Titan Robotics, but uh, what have you been up to? How are things going for both of you? Good. Yeah. It's, it's been super, like you said, it's been super hectic. We wanted to make sure... 
to get everything out. We wanted to ship like a month ago, but we had uh, some printing issues. We had to wait. And that was very frustrating for us because you were sitting on half the product. You know, like you're, you're saying, oh, my gosh, I've been sitting on this box for two weeks. Try six weeks before you can oh, yeah. ship. Yeah, well, that and then the, the other shipping issue, the, the shipping yeah. issue with um, the, the fulfillment yeah, partner, yeah. partner. Who they, is that indicative? And I'm asking this question because so I also I get a lot of free league stuff because, you know, we as far as like we like palladium for our more our lore centric our our I hate saying the word crunchy because it has a negative connotation but our crunchier and more in-depth games but I like the free league stuff for the more rules light type games and they have nothing but horrible problems with shipping it's not the company free league matter of oh. fact free league's great but right. the shipping has been horrible shipping is just a nightmare in general especially post pandemic the the worldwide logistics um yeah. things that happened um I mean I hear that's one of the things I hear, hear all the time behind the scenes when I was, you know, in the weekly um, pinnacle meetings. You know, I, I, I don't have really time for those anymore, um, but uh, I used to be in their meetings weekly for years. And and we, I would just hear all this stuff. And, and, and they're very organized, very prepare everything ahead of time type of people. And they're constantly getting curveballs. And sure enough, <laughs> we're running into the same types of things. Now, I think that we've gotten a lot of things ironed out. Yeah. But we had a, um, the printer that we've been using, Kevin been using for 40 years, was bought by a competitor. And oh, a big conglomerate. And mm -hmm. we are not happy with them. Nope. So, so, I mean, in the end, everybody's getting really great quality products. But it, there were literal days we spent hand sorting through books to make sure that the ones that they hadn't uh, done a good job with printing, got sent back. Well, then I, I wasn't going to bring this up, but since it's like there, we do have one of our Discord members who got a book that was not cut properly. <sighs> so the, the good thing is, contact us. We, yeah. we should have plenty of um, copies to send any replacements that are necessary. It was really weird. It was really weird because the things that we ran into yeah. were very random, like yeah. stuff that Kevin nor I, but especially Kevin, has so much experience he'd never seen it before mm -hmm. and um we tried to go through everything by hand but if yeah. someone we did actually did go through just about everything by hand yep. which was a lot of time um yeah just we need to see photos we just sent us a photo of the book and, of the book and, and we'll be happy to replace. okay yeah. I, i'll let you all work that out because this definitely is not a, a stream where we're going to complain about everything but no, 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 we, we, you mentioned we, that that was good you know, no, it's, it's just it's just frustrating please. because I, I had used a particular printer for 40 years. This would have been 40 years that we used McNutton and Gun. They were just godly, high quality, customer right. oriented. And now to be dealing with a big conglomerate who could give, you know, doesn't care. So, but the it's good thing is, yeah, we've got, I mean, you can contact through us, our help desk. You can contact us through Backer Kit, or you can call our office, right? Um, so that's, I mean, we're here you know, um, weekdays, Monday through Friday, uh, business hours. So, and we, we're, we're happy to take care of any issues that, that, uh, people run into, um, you know, and sometimes weird things happen in yeah. shipping too. Um, you know, so whatever it is, just give us a call, give us a photo. We, we're happy to help. We're happy you to know, help. You know, what would be the worst case scenario? What's that? Max opens up his, his box <laughs> yeah, right. and it's all jacked up. I mean, it's, it, it's all upside down. Pages are backward. Uh, there's, there's no numbers. on It, it. is. Like, Cause what? you know what? I, I personally packed that box <laughs> and uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I threw the books on the ground a couple times first, rubbed it. In this dirt. is for the last live stream. <laughs> right. Yeah, there you yeah. on yeah, it. I just threw it in a box and people were like, aren't you going to put some padding in there? I'm like, yeah, yeah. A big dump. <laughs> Uh, but you know what? I still appreciate it because Kevin said he took the time to do that personally. Exactly. <laughs> now I have Kevin's DNA. <laughs> that's a little weirder than I was going. But okay. that, that's, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> I, I didn't spit on it. So that was you know, me. <laughs> Uh, well, if you want, uh, so that we can we can move on with things here. Uh, I'll start opening this. We can talk yeah. about uh, about what's in here. Well, and, hang on, and, hang on. Before we do that, let's. Uh, you want to hit those super chats? Yeah, the super okay. chats, crafty. Oh, did you see the? You know, did you see the rules for yeah, super yeah, chats for two dollars? Okay. Is like when when we get to it. I figure that was when this is now yeah, when we get to it. It's a good time. And yeah. then anything anything over a certain amount is like immediate. Crafty says it's Sunday. Have you tithed today? Well, I guess what Kevin has. 
Kevin has tied. There he you says go. his book cover was cut short as well. Well, Kevin, now you know. I mean, if, if you go to the to the Palladium website, you'll get their phone number, you'll get their email for the customer service. Everything's gonna be there us. for you. Take take some pictures of the problem, you know, with a with you with a thumbs down in the background, <laughs> you know, just to add to effect. And uh, and they will set you up. Don't worry about it. I prefer the tears. Oh, the, the tears. You got, you got to have the, the Indian by the side of the road tier. Come down, <laughs> and then then you're good to go. Uh, yeah, we um, sorted through all the all the hard covers, but um, you know there could have been actually you know actually that's my my own copy. Yeah. It was a little cut short on the cover. So well, yeah, you, you, you know there is one important question. Knowing that you're using a, a new printer now, are we no longer going to get the Palladium peel? Uh oh. No, 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 no. You know, it's gonna, it'll be the same. Oh. Yeah, it'll be the same. I've got to have that. And yeah, it's funny gotta... how many people wrote comments on that. I don't think a single one complained. Everyone's no. like, yeah, my life no, It's the people. all character to them. Yeah, exactly. Well, exactly. Yeah. Well, also, it's like, you know, 30 years later and the book's still around, right? Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, it's, it's very, very few books I've ever seen that have peeled to the point where they're in trouble. They've only peeled to the point where you can tell. That's basically it. My TMNT book, it pretty much came, came off. All the way but, yeah, but, like I said, but I mean, again, really old book. I've used it a lot of times. Yeah. In fact, right, somebody was asking me to run a TMNT game. I've never actually run a TMNT game. All of my games, even with the old school version of it, have always been after the bomb. Oh. Mm, I thought you ran nope, a the game. No, the game I ran for you guys was after the bomb also. Remember, oh, Mom? It was, it, was, it was the first edition, the one, though, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was yeah. absolutely the okay. first edition. All right. Yeah, I... Oh, right. So got? right off the bat, got a note here. Uh oh. I'll let y'all read it. Hey, Yay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Archie. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Let's appreciate that. <laughs> oh, a box within a box. Dang it. Now I'm not going to have a broken book. I can't sue. Well, no, hang on. <laughs> it could still be screwed up. You know that. Yeah, well, come out. Here we just go. gotta get over the Russian nesting doll thing, and then you're good to go. <laughs> uh, Matroska. Yeah, actually, it's just box after box. There's nothing in there but packing <laughs> boxes. Oh, my cats will be happy. <laughs> yeah, cats and small children loving the boxes, man. <laughs> loving the boxes. I wonder if that says something about them. All right, right on top here we have, and I'll, I'll get to this in a little bit. We have the Rift Cyberwork deck of cards. Now this is the playing cards, right? Like actual yep. poker cards. Okay. Yep. yep. Sweet. Uh, let's... What what are, are the pictures normal? Well, no, no, no. Don't tell me. <laughs> what do you mean normal? <laughs> like the normal king queen stuff like that, or is it? Uh, is we'll it find Emperor out. Prozac and oh, that'd be cool. Definitely feels like a new deck. All right. Well, straight off the bat, there's your ace. Hey, it is special. That's nice. Uh, let's just. Level. I mean, here's the suits. So there you go. You can see a suit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, normal cards, but the face cards. Nice. Is there a theme to each of the different? Um... Yeah. So, so spades is cyber works. So like Archie's secret army and and sure. the characters like Hagen and Archie and stuff. Um, okay. Then uh, hearts is the Shumerians. Okay. Uh, the the clubs is the mechanoids. Yep. And then um, uh, diamonds is Titan Robux. I like that one. So yeah, yeah, and uh, the the. The jokers are fun too so um i'll show one of those in a second here all right oh uh, where am oh there's a joker i took it out already habit <laughs> yeah let's see if so i can get that out the... yeah yeah hope i trim my nails <laughs> 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 all right but uh just so everybody knows as i'm putting i'm not a poker player i actually don't get into card games when i was a kid i was forced to play cribbage like dang near every day of my life so if you want to see me have epileptic fix uh no, that... Tell That's me I have to play thing. cribbage. Yeah. yeah, I was forced to play cribbage as well. Oh my god, dude, 15. Anyway, so <laughs> uh, but these are definitely high quality cards. They're not cheap paper cards. They're that, that plasticish card. There's the other joker for you. Yeah. Uh and so Hagen and the Earthsaver one, and then the other one is the uh um the Republicans. Yeah. So you you will have no issue shuffling these at all. Uh it definitely feels like a solid deck. Yeah, and believe me. They're linen, premium linen. These are really nice cards. Linen, so, is that what it's called? Okay. Nice and, yeah, we're really happy with the, the premium print quality. Um, so very, very happy with Well, this things. is going to sit next to my deck of Iraqis that I have from the Gulf War. Because <laughs> I think that's my only other deck of cards that that's I have. <laughs> you have your you have your kill deck? 
Yeah, what, what is it? Remember when I went to Kuwait? Pretty yeah. much everybody had those Everybody things, got so. one, yeah. <laughs> so. All right. And we have uh, the obligatory advertisements, you know. We can advertise off the website. All right. What is this? And then, by the way, this is something I do appreciate. And I know this might sound very simplistic, but uh, separating stuff. Little plastic. Just, because I've actually had things stick together. And it's like, those things shouldn't have stuck together. Well, whether they should have or shouldn't have, it's like 400% humidity down here. Everything sticks. Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely appreciate that. And what do we have here? Is this artwork? Is this? Yep, that's the print set. That's yes, the color print set, yep. Okay. So let's show everybody that. It's in a, what do you call these comic book? Cellophane. Yep. Oh, thank you. Plastic See, I bag. don't do comic books, so I don't know crap about them. Yeah, oh, that's nice. box cover. I actually, this is the cover for Titan Robotics, right? Yep. Yeah. I I really like that cover. I don't know. There's something about the style of that death machine, but also kind of looking like Robbie the Robot you know, kind of thing going bit, on there. Yeah. I absolutely love that dichotomy, especially as somebody who wants to develop a, a, a setting that is very pulpy based, kind of old Buck Rogers style. You know, I look at that. I'm like, that is so perfect for what I'm going to be trying to put together. Uh, you want to hit that super chat? Yep. Since it's, it's, it's one penny off, $20. One we'll, penny off, I know. We'll let it count. Well, this is good. Uh, Gaming with ADHD says, Kevin, uh, notice uh, no Sean in there. That's, oh. uh, that's, that is going to be a thing. Well, I've, been, I've been around for 40 years. Of, of I mean, uh, do, do you have a red wig? Because you're definitely that stepchild. All right. <laughs> uh, Kevin, thank you for nearly 40 years of entertainment from my start with Robotech through Riffs and all the others. I appreciate you. Sean, ah, damn it. I'm looking forward to see what slash how you contribute to Palladium. Already has. And then us, keep it up. Okay. Woo we'll do. We will. Well, thank you. Enjoy Titan Robotics. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I can promise you this, just to prepare you, there are some Rifter questions coming later. Oh, sure. Uh, another okay, one that this yeah. is the Cyberworks one, right? Yeah. Yep. That's the original Sourcebook one cover, which yep. we're now using for the Cyberworks collection. Yep. yep. Are these the same artist? No. no. Okay. Well, no. I like both the artists one, then. So it's uh, yeah, Mike Majestic did the um, Titan Robotics cover. Okay. Um, and, and but then it's the, based off of Kevin Long's work, which was right. Kevin Long's designs design and colors. Yeah. So no, I think Mike did a great job um, yeah. homaging that style, yeah. keeping it consistent. Okay, we're about to hit my riffs ignorance here. This is a mechanoid, right? Yeah. Yep. All right. Whew. Going right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have to ask That's Heathen Dog from the well, an homage, I guess. If you're if you're making having new uh, new artists from the uh, from the Mechanoids book. Okay, I definitely want to know more about this one. This is awesome. Yeah, that's Shumer That's the Shumerian Nation cover. Yep. Yep. Shumerian Nation. I've I've heard that twice down the last couple of weeks. What is that? Uh, it's a book about the Shumerians. Yeah. So, yeah. so I mean, our, our, do, do you want to spoil it? I mean, uh, are you going to cover it, Heathen Dog? Yeah, it's true. Do we want to spoil it? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to spoil it? I mean, I mean, it, I don't it, think we should. I think we should be a no spoilers. Okay. okay. All right. The Shumerians All right. are a, 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 a what, let's see a race of um, alien warrior, alien women. cyborg warrior women. Yeah. That live. Okay. On yeah. The East we'll Coast we'll, we'll go with that. Yeah. We will go with that. Patrol the patrol the East Coast, and they're famously xenophobic. So that's a uh, whole source book about them. Death by Snoo Snoo. Yep. Exactly. And that's the new source book one revised cover. Nice. Okay. Revised and expanded. So, so. when you when you say revised, uh, what has been revised about the source books? It depends on which source book. I mean, typically we add another 32 to 64 pages. Yeah. Of if it material. says expanded, there's usually a lot more material. And then revised means. Um, I don't know, a lot of we'll, we'll go in just yeah, just kind of update things and, you are, and add more details maybe. about yeah. stuff and you know that kind of thing. We add it. What's really awesome about these? I have to measure them. These eight and a half by eleven or are they yes. eight by tens? Oh, yeah, perfect. Because I have a bunch of eight and a half by eleven certificate frames at work. Get, oh, they're going to go up at work. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're really really happy with how how beautifully those came out. So, um. and then. Piece de resistance. Titan Robotics hardcover. Look at that. Foil. Mm. The gold foil, foil cover, yep. yeah. It's a giant Pokemon card. <laughs> it's a giant. 
and inside we got right off the bat you got your yep cover in yeah. sheets yep all right check oh, to make sure the pages are cut correctly well i didn't have a soft cover so i'm good okay. and in here it's kind of hard unlike well to be fair that castles and crusades book had <laughs> bad cutting on the inside but no um uh, there we go and i've already thumbed through the uh the PDFs that you sent, so I, I generally know what's in here. I didn't read it word for word, but I did go through. I really like the layout. I, re I remember when I went through it, I was like, this is the type of source book that uh, you can sit down and whatever you need, you can find. And it's in a very uh, consistent order, which as a technical writer, <laughs> I might not be good at writing narrative style anything, but as a technical writer, if I were QCing this, I, I gave it uh, a, a good on the QC side. Not that that matters to you guys, but Oh, it matters to it me, does. and that's, that's what I spent a lot of my time on was, I mean, if two people have seen the Titan Robotics, um, the Raw Preview Edition, I think Matt Clements wrote a great book, but I reordered everything um, to give it that consistency and, and stuff, yeah. and um, and that's and that's also, like, that's my layout, right, uh, okay. work for, for that as well, so it's got my writing, my layout. This is a perfect page to show off. I know it's not big on the screen. One of the things I think I commented to you guys on, if it wasn't to you, it was to our Discord, was I love what I what I termed the three styles of art in there. There's some very simplistic line drawings. There's some very well-shaded art. And then there's some very homage, I guess we call long style uh, art in there that I thought was balanced really well. It wasn't like overly simplistic, but because there's some definitely high quality art in there, but the simplistic art even made sense. It set the tone for the page. I was actually surprised that because I normally don't care too much about art in a game. You know, uh, in the old days, my favorite game had some of the worst art ever done in, in all of gaming. Yet I still loved the game. Right. Uh, but this is one of those that when I looked at it, there was, I don't know what caught me about it, but I was like the balance between the simplicity, the nostalgia and the high quality, the shaded art. I was like, I really liked how that was put together. And if I didn't send that to you, well, there you go. Thank you. Yeah, we we, we work it. hard on that, and uh, yeah, there's. Uh, I think that um, uh, Stephen Cummings, yeah, really did a bang up job with yeah. a lot of the artwork um, yeah. that we ended up using. So, um, and and he, he was really able to. He and Mike Majestic are, have been really good at finding that balance, right, for between black and white, and then you know homaging what's come before, but doing something new and exciting. So, I mean, duh, he works for Marvel. You know, Mike does stuff yeah. with, with Hollywood. Wow. But, uh, yeah, it's, a lot of people don't, may not realize, a lot of fans may not realize, we've got some really talented oh, yeah. guys that we're working with yeah. for art. So we're super excited to be working with them. That's excellent. Uh, I did not expect this book to be this huge. I was, like, trying to find the bottom of it. This uh, Cyberworks collection. Now, what is the Cyberworks collection? So the Cyberworks collection is, what is it, the biggest book that Palladium's ever printed? Um it's up there, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I think it is. I think when we, we did the page yeah. count, it was a little over anything we'd done before. Yeah, it's 394 pages. So it's um, it's the the source book one revised, source book two mechanoids, source book Shumerian Nation, okay. and it has Rift's aftermath. And there's an extra page, um, in the Cyberworks section, of um stuff that I updated from a Rifter article by Mark Sumamoto, um, for new Archie weapons. Um, so that there's some new cyberworks weapon and that's just a page. So we don't usually list it in the bullet points, but, yeah, um, sure. I thought it was, you know, now Archie's bots don't just all have laser rifles. Um, no, they can have ion pistols and plasma weapons and particle beams. Um, but yeah. Um, and then it's all remastered. So yeah. it's all relayed out, um, with high res, uh, edited index. scans, edited index. Um, yeah. Oh, that's so, cool. <laughs> yeah, so you've got, <laughs> right. and yeah, and so, and then each, when when you're going through the book, each time you run into a new book, there's the cover, a black mm -hmm. and white cover, yeah. as, well, as well as we retain the original dedication and credits so that everybody's getting their due, you know, credit there. Is um, there a reason it, you picked those three books specifically? Well, th so we, they're basically, source book one um, is about the beginning of that Cyberworks and Archie and Hagen, that story. And then source book two, the mechanoids continued with that. And then Shumerian nation is also related. And then we have the stuff from Rift's aftermath. What, what we wanted was Kevin and I ran into when Titan robotics comes out, you know, there's this legacy, but how does someone going to jump in and get caught up with the whole 30 years of storytelling? 
Um, or what if, you know, a lot of our fans, they've lost their collections over the years. You know, a girlfriend threw it out. They sold it. I've whatever, heard right? that more than I care to admit. We hear it all the time. Especially so, the was, girl thing. It's amazing. Right? <laughs> oh, my or God. Mom or somebody, heard, right? I've or heard got, so many stories. Even even a, even a friend had this problem. My cousin uh, had to happen. It's, it's, uh, it's role-playing books, comic books, and trading cards. Yeah. Girls will get mad and just take oh, them, yeah. burn them, shred them, whatever. Wow. And then, you know, they, they they wonder why they get beat the fuck. Nope. nope. Stop it. No. <laughs> so. so I just want to point out that two things. One, despite your, your box having been drop kicked. Everything's good. Everything's really good shape. You're yep. very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I'm, I'm glad the personal touch was in there. Even when, yeah. even though I did find the spittle on page, what was not? Just kidding. But, uh, no, I, no, I, these are. It, and, and that's the gold. The gold collector's edition. This is what the uh, the mass market edition will look like. Okay. And this is one of those things where I I, I struggle with because it's for me so, it's fun to say I have this and this is a really good cover. Like I, I like this style beautiful? of cover, but when I put it in my collection. Anytime I have the special edition, it, it always stands out. <laughs> like, like I have all the stuff, and then that's the one that stands out. It's two stand out. Like, I don't well, know. I just have this really OCD for. mind. That's why it's like that. You know, it's I know. Than the other means I just have to buy another one. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, to, to be fair, like, this is going to help me a lot. Just paging through it and you explaining what's in here and me paging through this. Uh, I mean, I'm going to have to do a lot of conversion. But I'm not a Rifts guy. I'm an After the Bomb guy. But I'm going to use a ton of this for my After the Bomb idea. Oh, nice. so uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think you know you you can do that for sure. Um, and uh, it, it is a it is a beautiful book. It's but it's really yes. good if you want to flip through. It's all right there in one spot. Um, for people, we've had a lot of fans. So some fans will be like, "Why are you reprinting this?" And other fans are like, "Thank you so much. This is the favorite thing you've ever done." And so I you think know, most of our fans are in that second camp. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean that's the, that's the, that's why we do it because so many people ask for it and enjoy it. Um, so we're really glad. And then I also want to point out because obviously a number of people are think so this this is not shortcut. This is the way the the stinking printer cuts their books. Right. Some printers do that where you have a little bit of the white page. It doesn't go to the edge. Yeah, it's like right. a, a there's like an eighth of an inch or so. Yep. Uh, That's 16, so maybe. weird. It is like this is our other printer that we're moving to, and they cut their books normal. Okay, so you yeah. Don't have that that white edge. Yeah, it's it's just some of it is just it's it's a it's a like like we said it's it's industry standard, but it's a something different than what people yeah. might have seen the previous. And books. it's different than yeah. But I mean, if you have, if it, if it is more than just, you know, if you, if you think if it's not it was just like, that, if you think it's damaged, like, send us some like, photos. Yeah. We'll okay. take care of you. Yeah. I think it is just that, to be honest with you, from the yeah. picture that I saw. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you right now, if, uh, I don't want that printing standard. <laughs> I might well, have that, a couple of books behind me like that. And if that's becoming normalized, I'll, find, I'll, I'll get a PDF and print it out elsewhere myself. I know that might seem like a little I, I, issue, but that's not a little issue to me. Oh, for us, the same. We agree. We didn't ask for that. We didn't expect that. That's how they do the We books. put in the order, then they got bought, right? And then it was, everything changed. So that, again, that's kind of the stuff that we're dealing with. Yep. Um, that, yes, yeah, so that's why. And, they, and they're and they not, I mean, I don't want to spend half this time no, bashing right. that printer. But the point is, we're, we're going to a different printer now. And that's why, like, this is, this is our new book, and it's, it's perfect. Yeah, what people you know, are used to, what we're used to, the, our prefer, our preferred way of cutting that, right? So, well, I, th I think again, the people who like Palladium books, uh, the people who are like, I'm slowly, I didn't realize I was doing this, but I've slowly got a couple people interested in Palladium books. I somehow sold some Beyond the Supernatural for you, <laughs> uh, but uh, but when they look at stuff like they, they like to know that you know, how do I say this? That, that it's not ignorance, like, oh, we didn't know that was like that. No, you guys are on top of it. So the fact that, you know, you, you've got the answers ready, you're aware of that this is going on, You have that's just the style of cutting. I don't think anybody I know would uh, would recognize that. I think everybody I know thinks that's a mistake. So having that legitimate answer out there is, I think, what they're looking for, even if they don't yeah. like what happened. Yeah, and, and it's a little different, you know, um, than than, say, like, if your book is like half an inch cut too deep or something like that, mm -hmm. they trimmed it wrong. Let us know, right? But if it is just that that slightly different style of the cover, 
that is intentional. I guess they figure it's easier to flip through. Well, I, yeah, whatever. It's well, however whatever they're, reason they're, they have for that, but they're oriented. You know, it's just I've seen that before, and yeah, I, I don't like it either. Like I said, we stayed with McNaughton and Gun for forty years because we rarely loved tried them, out other printers. You know, the big conglomerate that bought them is you know transitioning everything to the way they do stuff, and we don't like it, which is why we're looking elsewhere. So. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and working with with companies that care are, care and and yeah. i mean it's i don't know it's really interesting you know on our side when you call up a company and you know the the customer service reps that are still working with us are like sorry they this is how they do it now blah blah, blah. and then this other company we're talking to them next th next thing we know we're having a video call with one of the owners yeah it was awesome so we we reprinted like, with this our new company we reprinted, where is it? There it is. Rifts Africa. It looks nice, but if you compared it to the original printing, it's a little it, dark. It's, it's darker, cover, redder, which kind of fits this cover uh, in, in the content inside because uh, you're fighting the four horsemen of the apocalypse. But yeah, we you, raised our concern. Yeah. We raised our concern <laughs> about. Hey, this isn't a. a the, the, a, the color. A, 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 you know, a one for one reproduction. Of yeah, it seemed oversaturated. And, yeah. And I get this email from them saying, well, we'd like to have a talk with you um, Tuesday or Wednesday, whatever is better for you. And I'm like, okay. And, and so we have this, this Zoom call. And this lady I've never seen before is, is on there. And she's like, hi, I'm I'm Lynn. Um, I'm one of the owners. And I'm like, holy yeah, shit. Yeah, Kevin wow. and I looked at each other. We're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but it's great, right? But the, because... And that's the kind of company we want to work with, mm -hmm. someone who cares so enough where one of the owners is on the call to say, we want to work this out. We want your business. We appreciate your books. They got beautiful artwork. We and, want to reproduce it nicely. And we're like, wow, that's and great. They they got um, the uh, the Yin Sloth uh, re revised and expanded um, printed yeah. in time for Gen Con. So, oh, yeah. Well, in the course of this conversation, you know, I was lamenting some of our woes of this other company. And I said, normally, I said I would have reached out to them. And uh, again, McNaughton and Gunn, there are many times where we're like, oh, we're slow, so behind on deadline. Can you cram this out? And they're like, yes. Well, not anymore if this conglomerate, right? Mm -hmm. So while I'm talking to them, and they're like, well, when do you need it? And I'm like, well, we're going to need it in like 10 days. Uh, and they're like, we'll get it to you. Oh, nice. Like, what? <laughs> they got yeah they were like we can get you a couple hundred yeah so. yeah we got them friday for, that it's for great to hear right. that because with prices going up one of the things that uh, is going all over my Service discord is how down. people are buying yeah. games for you know from whatever company is like prices are going up 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 i actually haven't seen you guys obviously prices do go up a little bit i haven't seen palladium jack up the prices to the same extent that some of these yeah. other companies been, have really doing our best to hold yeah. the line we hope everybody appreciates that because sure it'd be a lot easier to just jack up the prices but you know we're but we spend uh, people are like oh what do you guys spend all your time doing why aren't we getting booked blah 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 blah, blah. you know it's like well hey we're also doing all this right we're and it's and it's that's one of the things i'm glad to be here is it's not just kevin anymore it's me and kevin reaching out contacting different companies talking to people of course looking you know for ways to solve different problems the you're there so that's why in the office there's single ply toilet paper really crappy coffee <laughs> you know all that stuff to, to everybody you know, had to take quality for life cut for me yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> i had to for my salary <laughs> well, as somebody who still works for the government i resemble that <laughs> remark <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a He's a big fan of the single ply. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, hold on. You can't see it on the screen, unfortunately, but on Rumble, we just got a $50 uh, chat. I think this is a good time. So, thanks, oh, no. Kevin and crew, for the amazing years of gaming. I took serious advantage of the uh, Christmas in July big time, but you need more CS shirts. <laughs> uh, oh. we'll, be, we'll be opening my Kickstarter later today. Oh, that's right, because uh, Flady is... Uh, is are you, wait, are you creating something? I didn't know that. We'll be opening my or are yeah. you guys doing Kickstarter? I'm confused. Oh, it was but, uh, Flady, if if you I I didn't know what it is. You should post it on my Discord, Flady, or your your Discord, and you know I can I can shout out for you on, on streams. But 
for fifty dollars, he gets a shout out. You guys get a shout out. And yeah, um, we've we've been told that recently. Uh, like, yeah, you you cost me so much money. I'm like, oh, uh, what are, what are you buying? Free league stuff because I'm covering that. No, Palladium, man. I'm like, oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's good. And I'm and I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that that's happening because you know we have you on, not just to, like help our channel. Out. No, we have you because we love Palladium books, and if more people are buying it, that makes us happier. So now wait, wait, knowing that. Knowing that is true. We love Palladium books. Knowing that is true. Uh oh. <laughs> we, we got something here. When will we see an Africa revised and expanded? Okay, stop. No, no, don't answer yet. <laughs> don't answer yet. What I want to know is when you're going to turn Africa into an actual book. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> see, uh, Africa has, has the problem. And uh, Spirit West has has this problem as well, but more so, but I understand it more. It is every other world book has a, a rich, rich enough backstory and set up a whole bunch of adventure hooks after the main storyline. Like the main storyline in Africa is undoubtedly the horseman, right? That That's it. And then the secondary storyline is that is that butthead in Egypt. Yeah. The, the, uh, the butthead the, dragon in Egypt. <laughs> Rama. Rama. Ita, yeah, Rama. Rama. Yeah. yeah. But uh, so, but after that, how much you want to Europe? Yeah. How much you want to <laughs> go away now? You know, that's it. And, and there are there's a Splugor. There's a, there are Splugor trade hubs that are listed in that book as well. So you could all. But, but that you're right. There's, there's yeah. not there's not a ton of. Uh, we had originally planned on doing more at some point sooner than we have have actually done. Okay. Um, yeah. So you know, there, was, there were thoughts on it. There were thoughts on it. There were there were back burner plans, but they never got to the forefront. Yeah, yeah, okay. and it's that's why it's not on even like it was never even announced even yeah, right. you know for Kevin back in the day right yeah. <laughs> when um, but yeah no I mean they, we we maybe in the future that's you're right point. it's not as world booky as some other books oh no it's no it, well it's it's yeah. it's got better world book feel than Spirit West even though I still believe Spirit West is a better book than Africa. It does. It, it shouldn't say world book on it because it literally has no overall storyline. Like, every oh, that, yeah, that's book. the one that oh. should, should have been combined with New yeah, West. It com yeah. Combined with uh, with New West. It's and sort of like, like a, I, I said. I understand. It says in the in the foreword, "Hey, this was supposed to be in New West, but it grew and right. blossomed out of control, and we couldn't fit it in that book unless we wanted <laughs> it, it, a four hundred. Sort of a book. New West source yeah. book, but exactly. I mean, but it says world book on it, and I'm like, well, no, it's not. But I'll, no, I'll also push back a little personally because when I was doing um, all the cartography for the second edition um, Rifts for Savage Worlds map, um, there's it does list a lot of locations and a lot of unique cultures um, that you know the various Native American tribes and groups have. Um, right. It's just it doesn't dive as deep, right? Yep. And if you really want a campaign that dives into that, I would check out Terror on the Dark Frontier. Um, by Savage Worlds. By Savage, well. Well, by Pinnacle for by Savage By Pinnacle Worlds. for Savage Worlds, <clears throat> um, for Savage Rifts. But it's the first Rifts campaign box set. And, um, yeah, it's really, really good in my opinion. I mean, I don't put, I wouldn't put out anything that I think isn't good. Um, but uh, Kevin enjoyed reading it. I, I thought the writing was great. Um, I helped organize it, and I wrote some portions of it. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you want more of, like, a campaign that and you get to like delve in and actually experience a culture that's that's that one's more focused if you want that experience okay okay C could it also be that you know every world book to some degree i mean they're not supposed to be copies of each other in in so much as like they'll have five chapters there's a there's a, a 10 page background 30 occs 500 pieces of equipment and, like, like, all, and then right? two adventures they, they're they're more flexible than that and and to be that that's how my take anyway. And and to be fair, there are some, and I agree uh, again as a not a riffs person, but definitely learning more and more as Heathen Dog goes through it. People post on our Discord and so forth. Um, I'm learning more and more about uh, why people complain about certain things. But then again, when I sit back and think about it, it's like, are those complaints legit? For example, a complaint I have just from perceiving from the outside is and people brought this up is like, well, the OCCs and Rifts Africa just aren't useful anywhere. Anywhere now, outside of Africa, well, they, oh, well, they are man. not, you know, oh, viable really. I mean, you know, there, there's, there's a whole lot of juju and, and, and medicine man stuff that, 
that for, for the boots on the ground village, very useful, very helpful. You always want your medicine, man. I, I get it. But, you know, t- take him out of Africa, put him almost literally anywhere else. And he's like, uh, what do I do? But see, but see, I South wonder America, if Southeast Asia, I think you could use a lot of it for a lot of locations that aren't heavily like specifically dove into in, in Rift's world books personally. Okay. Because, but, but I would also say the necromancer, a lot of people, I mean, I think that they gloss over that because yeah. there's a lot of cool necromancy stuff in there. There is. There I, is. As soon as that came out, I used that with every other place where there was, a, there was necromancy, you know, North America, Europe, like, you know, Russia. Yeah. And then we, I, I didn't, but, I didn't like, go in. I read the necromancer and you oh, can cool. have a good guy necromancer. That's always viable in, in any game. You can do it. But that's a change well, from what you said on the on the, on the last stream. But, <laughs> well, there's yeah. also the mind bleeder is in Africa, isn't it? Not that I recall. The mind bleeder is Africa. But what well, you guys think about the? I just just to finish well, up my point. My point was that I don't think that they necessarily have to be. And I know that Kevin, you're on here before saying that all these you know you can take stuff from here and put it over there and so forth. And we're kind of in the opposite camp where it's like, no, we think you should compartmentalize it more. But I think that the books themselves lend to that just in how the books are written. If you want to write an Africa campaign and have an Africa theme in this world, then use the Africa stuff. If you want to move it around, you can. But if you're just comparing your plus ones and plus twos to the plus ones and plus twos over here, you know, are you playing the game or are you playing the world, so to speak? Right. Oh, go ahead. I'm speaking more about the the, uh, general OCC fit, not Mm -hmm. not just its powers and abilities, but the the OCC's – outlook will that work in other areas of the world and sometimes it just doesn't you know because other areas of the world are so vastly different from from where this occ grew up and became that it just won't fit role-playing wise anywhere else you know like i you are not good like uh, yeah certain uh, books are more you know lend to that better with the occs right and i i agree with you and i think that uh one thing that i will say about africa is a lot of even the OCCs and the different things that you've got in there, all of that really kind of builds back into connecting to the four horsemen of the apocalypse story. Yeah, line, yeah, right? it's for so that area in there. And you, you know, know what? That's... I'm not mad at that because I'm of the camp where world books should stay. You should stay in that world book. <laughs> you want to you want to go to to England, start a new campaign, get new characters, start them, have them be you know OCCs based in Great Britain or France sure. or Ireland or whatever. Well, do that. Sure. Stop stop option. roaming around the world. The only person who could do that is Aaron Tarn. You're not Aaron Tarn. Piss off. <laughs> <laughs> wow. second, right, right. Well, I mean, the thing is, too, you know, if you take some of those, uh, especially low-tech characters or mystically oriented characters um, into a, a high-tech setting, yeah, you're going to have to really focus on your role-playing and be really creative and inventive. And that's sort of like the real world. I mean, if you grab someone who had only been raised in a jungle and threw them in New York City, they're going to be pretty, uh, pretty lost. You must have some amazing groups. And I, and I say this because, to be fair, I've had some amazing groups as well. But what I'm running across in more modern times is people only compare the numbers. Nobody wants to play right. a disadvantaged character. Uh, one of the terms we use here is, we like to say, a character needs to be viable. It doesn't have to be the top. It doesn't have to be the epitome. No. It just has to be viable. And, yep. man, the, the I, I, on my Discord, even, people talk about Rifts. Oh, well, Rifts has got this problem because this, this OCC sucks when you compare it to this other one. It's like, yep. And I sit there, and I struggle with that because I get what you're saying, but if your game master is just running a campaign that's all about the plus ones and plus twos, I don't know. Well, I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's also is it a totally combat focused campaign? Yeah. How much are you using skills? How much are the characters preparing or re- researching? How much social interaction is in your common game, you know, because there are, there are a lot of OCCs that shine in the social interaction part. I I, I went over that uh you know a couple months ago on on my on my OCCs list for uh, men at arms, uh, bards and all this yeah. stuff, you know. So like, scout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, you, you have to, if, if you allow an OCC in your campaign, you have to allow them to shine. You have to yeah. allow them to do their job and, and do it well and feel good about it because they're supposed to be good at what they do. If you mm-hmm. don't let them do what they do, well, 
I could just shoot with my boom gun. Well, yeah, and, well, and like you know, I, one of one of the things I did when I was younger, right, and just you know, in high school and all that jazz, we we're gaming riffs. And one of the things I realized because I had a buddy that really liked to play those lower powered characters, and he but he really got into the role play. Yep. So I tried to make sure that everybody got a chance to do some skill checks or some role play. That there was something for each player in my game, in every session, every episode, every story, right? And if you treat it that way. As opposed to this is a combat simulator, right? Then then things can really shine. And and, and again, it's like you know, like a uh, with a wilderness scout, you could it could be a totally lame, weak character compared to the hatching dragon and the combat cyborg and the glitter boy, or they could be super useful if your game master is emphasizing the fact that you're trekking through this you know, overgrown, dangerous wilderness teeming with monsters, right? Mm -hmm. That could be saving everyone's butt, right? Well, so. the big one from the core book for us that people and Heathen Dog did his best to actually validate it was the vagabond. Everybody, man, Everybody the, the words the vagabond. It's like the skills, man. The skills. It's amazing. You can cover everyone's weak spot. Everybody. Yeah, yes. yeah. You you handle fighting. You're a mage. You you handle magic. You're a psionic. You handle you handle that. I'll but handle if you remember, Heathen Dog, if you remember else. what happened though, is everything. on our Discord, people kept saying, "Yeah, but this OCC is better than that one in that situation. Yeah, this OCC yeah. is better. Like, this OCC it, it, can do all that and more." Blah blah blah. Yeah yeah yeah. There, <laughs> there's there, I'm, I was talking the main book. The main <laughs> book. The the vagabond is the skill king. Is the skill king. I mean, well, if, 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 especially if you're in a city. But even if you're not, you can take skills that aren't. I mean, uh, in, in in my game, if you don't have the skill cooking you can make yourself sick. You right. don't know how, no one taught you how to cook. Chicken's pink in the middle. That's fine. <laughs> you know, it's great. Whatever. You know, like, oh, the, how, how well, long I like it rare. Yeah. I like it rare. What's wrong with that? <laughs> yeah. But if you have the cooking skill, I don't make you roll to see if you're going to get sick. It's going to be edible. Right. If you want to roll to see if it's good, you got to succeed. But even if you fail, you're still not going to get sick. It, it's going to yeah. taste like crap. It's going to be burned to shit or whatever, but you're still <laughs> right. going to eat it, right? I still agree. You know, so well, skills, skills, if they're used like that, especially if you have a wilderness scout, it's completely cool to cut down on the random encounters a little bit because your wilderness scout will know that, okay, there's a lot of tracks going here. I'm going to circle around. It'll, it'll take an extra right. 10 minutes, but we're not going to get jumped by whatever the made these tracks. Cause I don't need that nonsense. <laughs> you know, yep. so Just natural stuff like that, where, you know, just having the skill or having the OCC ability or that even that OCC around is going to benefit you in the back when it's going to streamline your gameplay because of the, uh, stuff that they were born and trained to do, and they just do it naturally. So they well, you win more. That's when when I designed when I designed the game system and my worlds, um, you know, I my background, as you guys know, as everyone knows, I would think by this time, you know, I I started off with the Detroit Gaming Center, so I saw all these different styles of play, and so. I consciously designed characters like Sean said he had a guy who liked all these, you know, lower level thinker type characters. I had people like that too. And every game master, every player has a different style of play. So I try to design my games to accommodate all kinds of, you know, tastes and choices. Um, but yeah. And then it, depending on how diverse your, your game is, the game master may have to think a little bit more and try to make sure that that guy is engaged or has his opportunities to do this or that. And again, there's nothing wrong with, you know, I've run into plenty of guys who are like, yeah, our team, it's, you know, we're all uh, juicers or we're all, you know, uh, glitter boys and we kick ass. And it's like, that's great. And, you know, you hear some of our games and, and I'm like, I don't, maybe it's not my cup of tea, but if they're having fun, that's great. Like a lot of people kind of, you know, poo poo power gamers, but let's face it. Most people who started gaming, especially if you started young, you were a power gamer. You started out as a power gamer. I have yeah. guys who are like, yeah, when I started playing your shit 15 years ago, I, we were just blowing snot out of everything. <laughs> oh yeah. And, but you know, it's weird now that I'm like 35, I like these games that have intrigue and this and that and all this other stuff. And it's like, we got that too. It's, it's, it's you know, you, you kind of grew and matured and, yeah. you know, but I don't care if you're 92 and you still like to blow shit up as a glitter boy. That's great. If you're having fun, that's fine. 
but I try to include a little bit of everything for people who want to be that other guy who yeah. want to be, you know, Alfred or Robin or, you know, that, that thing, you know, Reed Richards, who's in the background figuring shit out instead of, you know, up front punching out, you know, Dr. Doom. Right. I, I think the, the big problem is when there's a mismatch between what the player is pl wants to play and maybe what the game master is going to be running. Mm -hmm. Right. right. That, or, or that is generation. that you're right. That That is the That's really, true. really big decider because any OCC will work, but if a game master runs his game almost purposely, sometimes it seems against the OCC, he allowed you to take, like, what am I going to do as a player? You're just screwed. You're just screwed. I mean, if, if, right. if you don't get the opportunity to do what your character is supposed to do, it's you're going to feel bad all the time. Yeah. All right, yep. I, I got to jump in here with a uh, with another rumble rant. I said that the twenty dollar ones and higher. I gotta yep. gotta find a place for him. But he says the medicine man is not only viable outside Africa. Only three of its dozen abilities are anti witch specific. To me, it's much more fun version of the wandering do gooder than the cyber knight. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Grizzly. No, I mean it's right. It's but it, but on the surface you don't have a side sword right <laughs> you know you don't so it's it's it really comes down to exactly how how, how dedicated are you and what kind of stories are you telling yeah. are you taking time to help a village survive you know the the death of their crops or a plague or something are you focused on that or are you running a different kind of you know run and right. gun yeah. adventure game you know those are that's different kind and of there's games. nothing wrong with either there's one there's nothing wrong with it's either just, one. Sometimes you want to watch that kind of movie. Sometimes you want to watch a different kind of movie. Sometimes you want to play one kind of game. I play. I run my riffs games as rom coms. So. <laughs> I'd love to see that. <laughs> Dang it! Now I'm put on the spot. I don't run riffs. I run after the bomb. Uh, but uh, so I, I do want to backtrack for just a moment because I think we're going to get into an area here where I think we're going to forget about a couple of things that might be important. First of all, I want to finish. Is there anything about Titan Robotics? That you guys want to want to say express. I know you've been putting a lot of work on the packaging, oh. uh, uh, the, the production of it, and so forth. Like how that's gone. What's Two up, things. You? One, how you how you like or don't like how it turned out, and two, what couldn't you fit in there? Ooh. What just wouldn't fit and had to be cut? Well, it's got thirty two extra pages than what we announced on the Kickstarter. So first, yes. I'll point out. That I like free stuff. Basically, and the other thing I'll point out is, is if you want, you know, really high quality decks of cards, all yeah. these cool different things, even even if you want other people to have it, that's that's kind of the point of a Kickstarter, right? Is even if you just want this book, it helps us keep the costs down because we are keeping costs down. We aren't raising our prices like other companies are. And things like Kickstarter allow us to do that. So everybody that jumps on the Kickstarter, you, it, because when we order books, it's, you know, if you order a thousand or you order 2,000, 5,000, it makes a huge difference in the cost per book. Yep. So we, we really appreciate everyone's support with the Kickstarter. Oh, yeah. We're really um, excited about that. Um, um, I don't know. Is there anything that you want to talk about first? Yeah, I, 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 I can talk about it forever. But. Yeah, I mean, I just want to say, I, I mean, we're, we're real happy with I think people think feel like stuff is left out because uh, something we do that that's fun is we'll often, not always, but we'll often release a, a raw edition which is the uncut, unedited uh, original manuscript. And in the case of Titan Robotics, uh, Matthew wrote a bunch of stuff, and it didn't appear in this. Some of it does, some of it doesn't. We kind of took some things in different directions. And, and uh, um, you know, part of that was sometimes in this particular case, the decision was uh, the art. Um, mm a bunch of original art assignment never got turned in. And so we had Stephen Cummings jump in and he had done a bunch of original idea, you know, uh, designs that we could do whatever we wanted with. And so we kind of slotted them in or tweaked certain things. Yeah. And it doesn't, you know, one of the cool things, I think we talked about this before as a writer, especially of role-playing games, is it doesn't mean those other robots and stuff are gone forever we may go back and decide to put them in another book, whether right. they're Titan or whether they're something else. Yeah, we're thinking about maybe putting them in Rifter 86. So, okay. Um, okay. you know, because it, it, it was, there was like, I don't know, 20 pieces of art that Kevin had gotten sketches. He never got the finals turned in. Yeah. And so when I went in with all the Stephen Cummings art, which is awesome, yeah. as everyone's yeah. probably seen, um, it, but I had to recontextualize everything. Um, I talk about it actually at the intro of the book. I talk about it a little too. Um, 
So that was one of the things that was really challenging. Um, but in the end, the book has a ton of stuff. Um, there isn't a lot we didn't that we that didn't make it in because now it's got everything you've ever wanted and revised entries and rules and all that kind of stuff for um, Wellington Industries and Titan Robotics. Virtually everything's in here, um, and everything in it we love. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like Synthroids and, and the Titan yes. Robotics Courier well, team. Let's be fair. Would, would you say like, eh, this book didn't really meet our expectation? <laughs> but, I mean, I don't no, know. It, <laughs> it, 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 I love it. The I other mean, thing that really awesome. surprises me, and you, you kind of touched on it, Max, was Cyberworks Collection. It's freaking awesome. It, it, it's like a brick. It's heavy. Yes, it's quality. It it's beautiful. And one of the cool things, like when we say we remaster books, is we'll go in and if we can clean up the art, we will. You know, a lot of these books were printed back in the early 90s, early and mid 90s, and you had to use a particular printing process. Like everything had to be like comic book dotted. You can't, mm -hmm. you, you couldn't, couldn't grayscale. go with grayscale. Yeah. And yep. now you can. So art that was actually originally turned in as grayscale is appears grayscale as grayscale. And I'm looking at some of the stuff and I'm like, wow, I didn't remember, like, I, I didn't remember this art being so freaking awesome. <laughs> and it's like, oh, wait, it's grayscale. So There's you the, get all the detail. I mean, Palladium has some yeah, of the best you know, bestiary in far, as far as uh, image design goes. It's a, yeah, yeah, a laser uh, printer and a dot matrix. You know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, I, I, you know, when we originally came up, in fact, it was funny. I, I came up with the idea for um, the collection in, in, in a dream. And I was telling Sean about this dream I had where we collected all these books. And he's like, that's a great idea, Kev. It solved the problem I was worried about. You're even a genius when you sleep. <laughs> the false capacitor is what makes time travel possible. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, but it really, because I, I told Kevin, I was like, and it's awesome. catch everybody up. <laughs> that, you know, especially we knew we were going to have a lot of Savage Rifts fans that were jumping in. And a lot of them are becoming Palladium fans, right? And buying the books and all that. And it's like, how do we catch people up? How do we, how do we help those people that had their collection destroyed? Um, the other thing that was cool is, we re as part of that work, we remastered the PDFs for Sourcebook One, Sourcebook Two, yeah. um, the the Shumerian Nation. So all those books now, everyone, yeah. even if you didn't back the Kickstarter, your PDF on Drive Through RPG has been updated. It's uh, the completely yeah. new remastered yeah. version with indexes, hot linked, uh, you know, page numbers from the table of contents. It's like um, the book was written in 2023 or something. <laughs> and so so but but we feel like that brought a lot of that's just a lot we're trying to get as much value as we can in there and mm -hmm. do that with some of the really popular books um because you know we're a small company we're a small team a, a, you know a few delays here a few delays there can really like affect us um but uh but yeah and i personally I, i'm really I'm, I'm really proud to have worked on titan robotics matt clements did a great job um and uh i'm glad that people have a hard time telling who wrote you know which sections of the book and stuff like that or what i added um but uh i had a lot of fun with it and it was great to to, to work and on part of that legacy and uh you know spitball with kevin on all this stuff um i designed the card deck i'm super stoked with how that came out i'm really happy with how all the i mean just really happy with with the production no, we're yeah all. we're we're very pleased with it and we think everyone who backed it will be just as pleased yeah well, well, as, far, as far as the layout goes uh, like I, I can't sit here and go side by side, you know, Riff's Ultimate Edition or old TMNT book, whatever, and and say, okay, this is what is done different. But what I can say is, I know from looking at the PDF and now looking at the book, from the moment I open this book up, it still has the Palladium fonts, so we know it's a Palladium book. But there is something much cleaner about it. And yeah. again, as somebody's QC'd this stuff, you know, years ago in the past, my eye instantly caught the fact that, wait, this is a very, very clean book. I don't feel like it's cumbersome at all. I haven't tried to look anything up yet, but, but it, <laughs> the, the layout yeah, of, index. well, yeah, it hasn't, I did see it has an index, but, but, but the, but the layout of it is, is very, very clean. And if this is what Palladium's doing going forward, yeah. Like the sky's the limit, uh, you know, for people I, like I, me who I, care I, about I did that the stuff. Same with, with the new um, Yin Sloth Jungles yeah. revised and expanded. And by the way, we're, we're breaking this into two books now because we added so, you know, Kevin and, and um, John Klinkle added so much material. But 
Um, I'm a real big fan because I do the layout for these. Um, I'm a real big fan of two page spreads where possible because it's so much easier to reference everything on the page at once. Mm -hmm. um, if not, I like to try and break things so that it, it ends at a column. Yeah. Um, Kevin has done some stuff that he really likes putting in these little bars or lines to kind of break things up visually. And um, I'm a real big fan of that. When I it was funny when I when I re, when I did the remastered version of all the stuff. Um, Wayne did source book one revised. But I did the work on um, Sourcebook 2, um, the um, Sumerian Nations, and then um, I basically put together the Cyborgs collection, you know, from those files. And uh, it was fun because I, I, I felt like I was like, reach, like, you know, if you're tracing, uh, when you're drawing, you trace someone's artwork. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was doing that with Kevin's layouts because he hand pasted oh, yeah, all, all, the old, books, all, yeah. the old, um, all the old paste ups. So... Um, it was kind of cool because I'm recreating that in digital format and I felt like I got to learn a lot and, and he gave me some real great feedback um, after I did Titan, the Titan Robotics layout. So, yeah, we're trying to make sure that things are really clean, um, that it flows really well, that the information is presented really clearly. But clean we don't want, but still we want palladium. To right. That's the best right. balance exactly. right there. Yeah, we're, that's, what we're, that's exactly what we're aiming for. Well, and there's little things without getting too technical. That, that kind of open it up and make it feel a little more airy where, where it's easier to read. Yeah, like um, space between certain types of line or paragraph yeah. breaks. And there's a lot of little things that, that I feel like we really, yep. really tightened down the screws on a lot of this stuff. Um, wow. Well, I noticed. And again, I was, I used to be paid to notice. So <laughs> well, crafty for $20 says the best idea you Kevin came up with is the dog boy squad. Is that the best idea? Kevin's probably like, you know, I've come up with a lot of good ideas. That's the best one. But uh, that piece of art inspired my Dirty Dozen Dog Boy group for years. Riffs will always be fond memories for the goodest of dog boys doing bad things. Well, thank you for the $20, Crafty.